I wonder how to experiment with the mind without without any medical assistance first. Like you know, I, I push my mind in all kinds of directions. I definitely want to. I, I did uh, shrooms a couple of times. I definitely want to uh, figure out how I can experiment with um, with psychedelics. I'm talking to uh, Rick Dobin, I oh, think Dublin. Dublin. Uh, soon, <laughs> I even went back and forth. So he does all these studies on psychedelics, and he keeps ignoring the parts of my email that asks, like, "How do I participate in these studies?" <laughs> yeah, well, there are some legality issues. I mean, conversation. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that anyone should nope. run out and do psychedelics. Nope. I think that drowsy states and sleep states are are super interesting for accessing some of these more creative states of mind. Hypnosis is something that my colleague David Spiegel, associate chair of psychiatry at Stanford, works on. Where also, again, it's a unique state because you have narrow context, so this is very um, kind of tunnel vision, and yet deeply relaxed. Excuse me, deeply relaxed, where new algorithms, if you will, can start to surface. Um, strong state for inducing neuroplasticity, and I think that you know. So if I had a, um, I'm part of a group. Um, that uh, it's called the Liminal Collective as a group of people that get together and talk about um, just wild ideas, but they try and implement. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a really interesting group. Some people from uh, military, from uh, Logitech, and some other backgrounds, academic backgrounds. And I was asked, you know, what would be um, if you could create a tool? Mm -hmm. If you just had a tool like your magic wand wish for the day, what would it be? I thought it would be really interesting if someone could develop psychedelics that have. Um, on off switches. So you could go into a psychedelic state very deeply for 10 minutes, but you could launch yourself out of that state and place yourself into a linear real world state very quickly so that you could extract whatever it was that, that happened in that experience and then go back in if you wanted. Because the problem with psychedelic states and dream states is that, first of all, a lot of the reason people do them is they're lying. They say they want plasticity and they want all this stuff. Mm -hmm. They want a peak experience yeah. inside of an amplified experience. So they're kind of seeking something unusual. Yeah. And I think we should just be honest about yeah. that mm -hmm. because a lot of times they're not trying to make their brain better. They're just trying to experience something really amazing. But the problem is space and time are so unlocked in these states, just like they are in dreams, that you can really end up with a whole lot of nothing. You can have an amazing amplified experience, housed in an amplified experience and yeah. come out of that thinking you had a meaningful experience when you didn't bring anything back. You didn't bring anything back. Right. All, you, all you have is a fuzzy memory of having a transformational experience, right. but you don't it actually be, have yeah tools to bring back. That's or right. I just, sorry, actual, actually concrete ideas to bring back. Yeah, it's interesting. You should, yeah, I wonder if it's possible to do that with the with the mind to to be able to hop back and forth. Well, like I it, think that's where the real power of you know adjusting states is going to be. It probably will be with devices. Um, I mean, maybe it'll be done through pharmacology. It's just that it's hard to do on off switches in in human pharmacology. That we have them for animals. I mean, we we have you know Cree flip recombinases, and we have um, you know channel opsins and halo root opsins and um, all these kinds of things. But to to do that work in humans is tricky. But I think you could do it with um, virtual reality, augmented reality, and other devices that bring more of the somatic experience into it.